to understand Olympus DAO, it may be necessary to first understand the problem it solves. That is the challenge of over-reliance on the dollar. The traditional stable coins such as the USDT are pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the dollar. The original idea was a brilliant one. Stable coins would provide the elusive stability that we don't have in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. The problem with that is that the dollar itself is not stable and therefore it beats the logic of expecting stable coins to live up to their name. Also, cryptocurrency is so popular because it eliminates the control of middlemen from money transactions. We seem to have succeeded until we introduced stable coins. It would seem we opened the back door for the Federal Reserve and central banks. Olympus DAO aims to become a decentralized reserve currency that is community owned and backed by decentralized assets. Olympus DAO token OM is also a stable coin, only that it is backed by decentralized assets. Note that the word is backed and not pegged. The USDT stable coin is pegged on the dollar one to one. If the dollar is devalued for whatever reason, all the stable coins pegged on it devalue. OM token is backed by DAI, meaning that the value of OM is not allowed to trade below one DAI, but it can trade above it. OM is supposed to be a free floating currency to mean its value is determined by the market and not by the dollar price. So now that the Olympus DAO token is subject to the market demand and supply forces, what happens if those forces push the OM value below one DAI? Sure, that would happen if there is oversupply. In that case, the DAO buys the excess OMs and burns them, effectively stabilizing its price. Similarly, if there is excessive demand of OMs such that the price trades above one DAI, the DAO seizes the moment to meet new OMs and issue to the market in form of bonds. Through bonding, the Olympus DAO is in essence minting its own liquidity instead of renting it. As you may be aware, long-term liquidity is one of the challenges facing DeFi protocols because of the dependence on external liquidity providers. Olympus DAO solves this problem by being its own liquidity provider through bonding. Basically, to participate in bonding, you would have to exchange your LP tokens for OMS at a discounted price. The discount is to incentivize people to participate in bonding and staking. It boosts the DAO's liquidity because the LP tokens are permanently taken over by the DAO. Through bonding, the DAO is able to grow its own treasury of assets. This is where instead of using LP tokens, one uses other assets to swap for OMS. These assets back the OM, giving investors confidence in OM as a store of value. OM can be likened to the dollar during the good old days of the gold standard. I've already explained how Olympus bonding works and how it is incentivized. However, this video would be incomplete without explaining staking. Stakers deposit their arms into the protocol, contributing to the DAO's long-term liquidity. The stakers are rewarded with the profits generated by the DAO's treasury. One of the incomes that constitutes Olympus profit is liquidity fees. Remember, Olympus is decentralized and backed by different crypto assets. The DAO charges users for transacting with these assets. Another source of income that also constitutes the DAO's profit is premium sale of bonds. This can be a bit confusing because I've already mentioned that the bond are discounted. While that is true, the bond prices will still depend on the demand. The price goes up when the demand rises. The DAO may end up selling some at a premium, reaping the profits. And by the way, no one entity or individual owns the DAO. Olympus is community owned with decisions made through voting by all token holders. So even if a President Nixon is not happy with the idea of the DAO's gold standard, quote unquote, he would not unilaterally make that decision the way it happened with the dollar. As a matter of fact, the DAO is completely decentralized with no hierarchical systems. To understand how Olympus DAO works, think of it as an improved version of your country's central bank. The way the central banks keep different assets like gold and other countries' currencies to facilitate international trade, Olympus also maintains a treasury of crypto assets for the same purpose, more or less. Like the central banks, the DAO also implements monetary policies to stabilize OM. The improvement would be that while fiat money is not backed, OM is. Better still, OM is like the US dollar before President Nixon got rid of the gold standard. Also, Olympus is decentralized and autonomous, unlike your country's central bank. Hopefully, you found this video interesting. If you got value, kindly give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comments.